How's it going, Ronnie? Ronald, it's going great. Wonderful. <laughs> How's it going, Ronnie? Ronald, it is going great, but I gotta tell you, I had such an interesting thing happen last night. I went to dinner with some friends, and I honestly felt like I was at a Neanderthal or a Renaissance meeting. It was crazy. <laughs> These guys were like, butchering their steak, and it was just a weird experience. Like, have you ever thought about what is the right way to cut your steak? What I found to be most interesting is that the person that I was with literally grabbed the utensil like this, stabbed it as if the steak were going to run off of his plate, and then grabbed his knife and just started chopping the thing into you know little bite-sized pieces. And it just it made me uncomfortable. I don't know why. I don't know if there's rules on the proper way to cut a steak, but it just felt odd. Well, I think we should create some rules. All right. So if we want to have rules around steak, it's not going anywhere. That is hunting, not eating steak. You gotta cut the steak in the right direction. Uh, against the fibers of the steak. That's very, very important, which keeps the flavors in it. That's wait, a, wait. that's rule number one with cutting a steak. If you're gonna cut it at all, cut it uh, against the grain. Cutting with the grain. I don't know, yeah. I, let's ratchet this back a little bit. I would say rule number one is when you hold your fork and your knife, hold it as if you're at prom if you're young, at a wedding if you're older, or an event where you, know, you hold it in one hand, the knife in another, and really all you're trying to do is to get one little bite, one little morsel. Rule number two, is you cut your steak and you hold your steak properly. So what I'm gonna demonstrate here is this is the European way. You take your fork with the times down, you get just the perfect piece that you're gonna eat, then you take your knife with your right hand or your power hand, Okay. and you cut just a piece, perfect size, for eating. All yeah. right, let's do the American style then. All right. Very similar, right? Get your utensils, find the nice piece you want, you cut it, <clears throat> put your knife down, switch hands, Take the nice piece, eat it in your mouth, chew with your mouth closed. I'm all about enjoying my meal, enjoying the meal with the friends. I'm not worried about the fork and the knife and all that. So I'm picturing a dinner with Ronald. It's like, stab the steak, pick it up, eat it like a lollipop, and just start nibbling around the edges. Neanderthal way, all right. caveman way, ah. Or here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to take this and hold it here and cut pieces that are too big or like this. Not the right thing to do. Why do you even need the fork? Because if you really want to experience the food, just go ahead and grab it. Unless you're like a dog or a wild animal, steak is meant to be eaten with a fork and knife. But if you're at home and your kids already know all the right manners and all that, I mean, what else are you going to teach them? Eat how you really want to eat it. That doesn't make any sense. It's like saying you go to the pool and if there's other people, don't pee in it. But if it's just you, right ahead, pee in that pool. There's some countries in the world, you go into those countries, you have a meal with them, they're eating with their hands. I mean, what are you going to do? like bring your own uh, utensils and is that really being respectful of their cultures listen there are finger foods for a reason steak is not one of them it's i get it my parents basket. taught me the right way to do it and the fork on the left i think and the knife on the right and the you know the bread and the drink you know it's the b and the d and all that i, I learned all those things all i'm saying is is that i go with the flow when you think of the proper way to eat steak you know having the right kind of knife have you ever seen somebody who has a butter knife and they're trying to gnaw away at their steak and they're not getting anywhere you have to have the right tools okay. this, or hands I mean you know the right teeth to tear it apart but you know, the right tools are important and having a proper steak knife if you don't have if you're at home get one if you're at a restaurant and they don't give you one ask for one steaks are hot like if you go to those restaurants they warn you the plates still mm -hmm. cooking the steak or whatever it is you know I always thought about where do you put your utensils when you're eating steak in that scenario <laughs> well like, if you lay it on the plate you're gonna burn yourself uh, yeah and I took an etiquette course years and years ago and I would like to say that I remember everything I learned and there's something about the Middle Ages and all this stuff uh, this kind of stuff. What I think, we need to talk to an expert. It's a great idea. How do you cut your steak? Like, what's the right way to do it? Because I've seen so many people do it different ways, and I want to know the right way. There are two styles that are acceptable here in the U.S., and I teach American and European style. This is actually a very simple place setting. We have the napkin on the left, the fork is on the left, and the knife is on the right-hand side of your place setting. Actually, a common question that I have, which way to put the blade of the knife? And it always faces in. Okay. The knife the plate always faces toward the plate. I'm going to start with American style. What you need to do is hold your palms open, okay. balance the knife in your power hand, and the fork in your other hand. So in this case, my power hand is my right hand. Okay. So you lightly grasp, you turn the fork and knife over, you make your cut behind the tines of the fork, like 
this. Huh? The knife goes at the top of the plate. The blade always faces in. So you switch hands. Your hand goes that you're not using goes in your lap. And this is the most important part, how to hold your fork correctly. And it's like a pencil. There are three fingers underneath, an index and a thumb on top. You do not cut your entire steak. You cut one bite at a time and you chew with your mouth closed. For resting position, American style, we're visualizing the plate here. The knife is at the top, the fork is slightly below, and let's just pretend that this is a glass. Your glassware, your water, your wine, your lemonade goes on the right hand side of your plate setting. So let's say you, you want to take a sip of water. So you would put your utensils in resting position and you would um, of course take your glass or sip of your lemonade. When you're finished, if you're eating American style, the fork and the knife are balanced on the bottom right hand side of the plate. The handles go off to the right. The tines of the fork are up. So that is the resting position for American style. I feel like I'm pretty astute on this topic, but I learned some things that I think are pretty important. So number one is the blade facing towards you. The, the yeah. blade always Why? faces towards you. It dates back to the early ages where if you knife blade pointing out, that means you are in a hostile, uh, or aggressive, okay. you know, yep. take care of me type of situation. I actually took an etiquette class. What I do remember is this, the B yes, and the D. Yes. Yes. Red on the left, D on the right. Because uh, when you sit at a table, you gotta figure out like where yes. you're gonna sit. Let's the B and the D. Uh, the What's B and the, the D? D? Stand for? Uh, the drink. Bread, uh, drink, right? Yes. Does that work? So you have your <laughs> napkins on the left, your fork is on the left, your knife is on the right, your drinks are always on the right. But instead of doing this, okay. think in your mind a red hot BMW, a beautiful, gorgeous car. Bread, meal, water. So you made a comment about with the yeah. American style of cutting your steak that you cut one piece at a time. Yes. Now, it feels like this is gonna be a very long meal. <laughs> and, and that you're cutting, you're switching hands, you're going to the thing, it just seems Seems like maybe you want to cut two or three ahead of time, but never. Never do that. After six years old, you do not need to be cutting your entire plate of a food. A lot of cultures, they'll end up cutting the steak into pieces before it even gets served. So it comes on your plate actually all yeah. cut up. Like, yeah. what do you do in that situation? You go with it. Okay. You never want to point out what someone's not doing correctly. So you talk about how you hold your fork and how you hold a knife, but does yes. it say it's to assume then that the piece of meat that you're holding should be small enough for your bite? Your yes. Cut? Yes, good question. A bite-sized piece okay. all the time. I'm going to demonstrate napkin etiquette because there's actually a lot to know here. The napkin needs to be to the left of the fork. Sometimes you'll see it right in the center of the plate, maybe sometimes in the glass. Once you are seated uh, and you notice the napkin is kind of has this flap, mm -hmm. and so it's nice to fold the napkin this way because you can take the corner, you unfold it underneath the table, and the fold of the napkin goes towards your waist. This allows you to pick up the corner of the napkin or use the corner of the napkin to wipe your mouth and then the napkin goes back in your lap and I know you're going to ask this when you excuse yourself during the meal the napkin stays in your chair the napkin doesn't touch the table until the very end of the meal and it goes to the left side of your place setting so you mentioned this European style, now I'm intrigued. The way of eating up there is, is actually very beautiful, it's quiet. Again, you can hold your utensils in uh, just the same way as I demonstrated in the American style. On the index fingers, lightly grasp, turn it over. You're going to make the cut the same way. Instead of putting the knife at the top of the plate and switching, here's what you're going to do. You're going to make your cut behind the tines, and instead of making the switch, the fork stays in, in my case, my left hand, with the tines down. And the knife stays in your right and hand? And the knife stays. Okay. And so if you can visualize a normal dining table, my wrist are on the table. You know, this wrist stays on the table and you continue to make your cut here. So you don't hug your meal, either American or European style. You don't put your elbows on the table, but it is acceptable in the European style to have your wrist above the table, but nothing else. So okay. you're gonna make your cut, you're going to chew with your mouth closed, resting position. 
is at the bottom of the plate, the utensils are crossed. This gives you a chance to use your napkin to take a sip of your lemonade or your water. The fork always over the top like that? The, the fork is always over the top. Okay. And then you go right back to eating. This also is a great style if you're a foodie. So let's say you have your steak, as you said, and you have uh, baked potato or mashed potatoes or roasted potatoes. You can take a cut of the steak, use the knife as your pusher. So again, let's pretend here. So we have our bite of steak. We have a little bit of the delicious potato on there. And again, it's small portions and that tines go down into your mouth. And that allows you to have the flavor of the steak and the flavor of the potatoes at the same wow. time. So remember that I'm finished in American style tines up. In European style, the tines are down. So the rules are, you have two ways in which you can hold your silverware. And when you hold the steak, it sounds like it's always times down in either style. Bite-sized pieces, I got that. One bite at a time. One bite at a time, one cut at a time. One cut at a time. Thank you so much, Lisa. Absolutely. This was uh, this was perfect, exactly what we needed to know about how to do cutting of the steak properly. Well, I have to say it was really great having Lisa on the show. I think she's got some really, really smart things to say about this topic. And some of the stuff you said doesn't look so smart <laughs> yeah. now, does it? I know, I guess like picking up broccoli and steak with my hands and eating, even though it just seems so functional, probably not the right thing to do. But that was very, very informative. But we want to hear from you all too. Like, what do you do? Do you always use utensils or how do you do it? And particularly, how do you cut your steak? Let us know and check out some of our other videos. And Ronnie, it was good talking to you it's again. It's always fun, my friend. Let's go get a steak. Let's do it. See you later.